Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a relatively recent discovery coming from NASA when they realized that the asteroid that they actually sent a mission to seems to be accelerating. That's right, we're going to be talking about this unusual discovery and I'm going to explain to you why it's happening. Welcome to What The Math. And so this right here is the OSIRIS-REx mission I've talked about previously. And um, it's a mission that was launched approximately two years ago and has arrived to the asteroid Bennu uh, back in December of 2018. Now, um, the mission itself, as you can see, is going to actually capture a piece of Bennu and then return back to Earth in um, approximately four years from now, I believe. But before this happens, they're, they're actually going to um, very actively uh, track the asteroid and also try to measure its mass. But most importantly, NASA is actually planning to uh, use uh, the radar on top of OSIRIS-REx to scan the surface of the asteroid and very precisely map everything, just so that we know what it's like and uh, what it has on its surface. So for basically at least 3-4 years it's going to be doing just that. And as of today, they've actually already done a pretty good job. Uh, the surface of this asteroid is already really well known. There's already several locations where NASA has chosen to land and uh, to collect the samples. But um, what is really interesting about this particular asteroid is that as they were essentially scanning it and doing all of this um, surface observation, they realized something strange was happening to the asteroid itself. And what NASA realized is that, uh, turns out, Bennu is one of the super rare types of asteroids that actually accelerates quite a lot. Now, for the most part, most asteroids actually accelerate just a little bit, usually due to what's known as the Yorp effect, also known as the Yarkovsky effect. I actually made a video about this um, a couple of years ago, and you can find it in the description somewhere, or actually somewhere above my head, I believe. But the idea of the Yorp effect is that the Sun itself um, can actually give an asteroid quite a dramatic boost and accelerate it um, in, well, like a somewhat unpredictable uh, direction. So basically because the Sun heats up one of the uh, sides of the asteroid, right here, you can see that it actually starts kind of accelerating it by essentially providing it with a little bit of a boost um, that happens due to um, various evaporations and various uh, types of molecules escaping the surface. And this happens um, somewhat unpredictably. It's kind of difficult to actually predict where this asteroid is going to go, even though we understand the math behind it. Um, so this is what we actually were able to detect, um, and we realized that it does so quite dramatically. As a matter of fact, if I were to actually show you the orbit of Bennu, which is right there, uh, there's Earth and there's Bennu, um, what we actually realized very recently is that, well, first of all, due to the Yorp effect, or Yarkovsky effect as it's also known, um, Bennu actually changes its current orbit by approximately 280 meters per year, which is quite dramatic. Um, I mean, it's not a lot, but it's still enough to actually kind of uh, start making us uh, worried because Bennu is also known as the second most potentially dangerous asteroid in terms of collision chance. So if you actually go to NASA's JPL website and try to find Earth Impact Monitoring um, catalog, you'll discover that Bennu is right here, it's number two, right after the most likely to hit Earth. And so uh, Bennu does have quite a high chance of collision, but in the next few hundreds of years, uh, as we've kind of calculated mathematically, the chance for collision is only about 1 in 3000. Even if it starts accelerating or decelerating, and even if it changes its trajectory quite dramatically. So we kind of accounted for all of this and we realized that the chance of collision um, is still not very high. But on top of all of this, we discovered something else really unusual about Bennu uh, super recently, actually, only a, a few weeks ago from when I'm making this video. It also happens that Bennu doesn't just uh, change its orbit, it also seems to be changing its actual spin. In other words, it's also slowly accelerating its rotation. Now, this is actually something that we really didn't expect. And this is also due to the Europe effect, we think at least. Uh, but um, it basically is currently spinning approximately 4.3 hours per, uh, per spin, per um, rotation. 
And uh, every 100 years or so, it accelerates this by a kind of a measly amount, actually, by only one second. But if you account this for like a long period of time, for like, let's just say millions and even billions of years, it eventually is going to spin or rotate so fast that it's most likely going to uh, fall apart into several pieces or potentially create a relatively unusual shape. And even though currently it looks like this, it's relatively round, eventually it's most likely going to look a lot more flat and uh, can then maybe even become a binary asteroid or something else entirely. So this is kind of an interesting discovery because we have never really detected an asteroid that um, accelerated its spin so dramatically. And so all of this was actually due to the OSIRIS-REx mission that uh, was able to discover all of this relatively recently, in, in only the last few months or so. Now, uh, the most interesting part of this is that it also helped us understand that it's very likely that Bennu had quite an interesting origin and will most likely have quite an interesting end. Now, um, right now, we don't think it's actually going to hit Earth. As a matter of fact, uh, by 2060, there is a slight chance it's going to come relatively close to Earth, but still farther than the Moon. And in 2135, which is basically over 100 years from now, um, it also is going to come relatively close to Earth, but once again, it's probably not going to hit Earth. And so what we actually think, at least statistically, is that it's probably going to, because of its a spin, because of the Europe effect, eventually escape this orbit it has around the Sun very close to Earth, and uh, most likely will be influenced by the gravitational attraction of Jupiter to come closer to Venus. And so it actually has a relatively high 26% chance of hitting Venus and not Earth. It also has about 10% chance of actually hitting Earth and uh, about 3% chance of hitting Mercury. So its orbit is still changing. But at the same time, uh, there is actually quite a high chance that maybe, just maybe, it might end up um, getting kicked out of this area and uh, coming closer to uh, Jupiter. And if it actually does approach Jupiter, the gravitational attraction of Jupiter will probably just kick it out of the solar system entirely. So it essentially has a chance to escape our solar system. And because it's uh, spinning so fast and because it's rotating so fast, um, it might actually become what Oumuamua became, but in a completely different star system. So for all we know, maybe that's actually how the unusual fast spinning object known as Oumuamua came to exist as well. So there's a lot of really interesting things that we discovered about Bennu, uh, and that's even before we recovered a piece of it. And what's um, kind of unusual about Bennu is that we believe that originally it actually came from the asteroid belt. We believe that it was actually created there, and due to the interaction with Jupiter and uh, combined with the Europe effect, basically the actual solar pressure that turn it into a kind of a miniature rocket, um, it eventually made its way closer and closer to Earth and will one day probably end up somewhere else entirely. And so this particular discovery helped us understand how, um, even though we believe asteroids are sort of like these solid rocks that sort of maybe stay in the same region of space, um, Bennu is definitely not that. And many of them probably are very similar to Bennu, we just haven't really studied them enough. So uh, these asteroids, they actually travel across almost the entire solar system and end up in strange locations. And it's not just due to the gravitational effects, but it's really the combination of um, gravity, but also the effects of the sun that kind of create somewhat unusual and um, relatively unpredictable effects that are similar to a rocket engine. Essentially, the actual particles on the surface of the asteroid start emitting um, energy and produce a bit of a, a boost. And so that's really awesome and that's very unusual. Now, if you actually want to learn more about the Europe effect and how it really works, check out the video that I made previously that should have showed up um, a few minutes ago. And that video does explain, um, well, the details of Europe effect. But overall, even today, it's still relatively difficult for us to predict this effect because it's just a little bit random. And even though this mission has really just kind of officially begun, we already discovered so many cool things about this asteroid and we'll hopefully discover more. Now, this mission itself is um, sort of competing with the Japanese mission uh, from JAXA that's uh, doing something relatively similar on the asteroid Ryugu. And they've uh, actually uh, already collected the sample and they're going to be returning it to Earth a lot sooner. But the much more interesting thing about the NASA's mission is, of course, the fact that they're 
also going to be mapping everything very, very precisely. Which will hopefully help us understand the origin of our solar system, but also help us discover even more unusual, interesting and possibly unpredictable things. So other than this particular discovery, uh, that's really all I wanted to mention in this video. I mean, it's kind of amazing how um, Sun itself can have such a dramatic effect on these asteroids and how it can basically kick them around the solar system without really anyone else or without anything else that is. And this is really interesting because one of the um, asteroid re redirect missions has mentioned this particular effect. As a matter of fact, one of the coolest ways of redirecting a trajectory of an asteroid is, um, according to NASA, by sprinkling it with a relatively reflective material, which will then actually increase the orb effect, giving it such a dramatic boost that it will most likely change the trajectory of any asteroid so much that even though, let's just say, it was about to collide with planet Earth, if you were to do it early enough, let's just say like a year ahead, um, it could actually boost the orbit quite dramatically, thus avoiding a potential collision. So, you know, forget about nuclear weapons, forget about colliding things with an asteroid. If you just sprinkle a reflective material on the surface, it will be enough for it to um, boost the asteroid into a higher orbit or kick it out of the solar system entirely. And so that's how powerful this particular effect is. Well, anyway, on that note, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Hopefully you learned something from it. And so hopefully now you know a little bit more about asteroids and the Europe effect. On this note, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Subscribe if you still haven't. And maybe even share this video with someone who loves learning about space. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.